Florida, South Florida saltwater fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bite. Dolphin in the boat, baby! You having fun? Nice sailfish on a white buff sail jig. Look at like that. Alright folks, welcome to the beginner's guide to catching king mackerel. In this episode, we're going to go over the basics of what you need to do to be able to get into the bite with these ferocious reef predators. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, and just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. Okay, so we're gonna get right into this, the meat and potatoes. We're not gonna beat around the bush and go through a bunch of information that you don't need. One thing you do need to understand about king mackerel, also commonly known as kingfish in the South Florida area. They are reef predators, which means you don't need to go way offshore, five, six, seven, eight hundred feet looking for them. You are going to look for kingfish in between somewhere around 80 to not much more than 200 feet. King mackerel are one of the easier fish to find when you are coming to reef. The easiest way to get into the bite with them is by trolling. So if you don't know how to troll, you're gonna need to learn to get into this tactic. More so than trolling is you're gonna need to learn how to troll with a planer. This is a planer. What this device does is it helps your bait get down into the water column. Why do I say troll with a planer? Kingfish are typically not found up on top. I mean, you will get into the bite with them periodically up on top, but more often than not, they're down in the water column, 30, 40 feet, 60 feet down, sometimes hovering right over the bottom. When you are planer trolling, you're gonna need big gear. You're gonna need conventional reels like these on you know, 50 to 80 pound class rods, maybe even up to 100, 120. I like to be on the little lighter end because I like the shock absorbency of a rod. What is shock absorbency? Well, when your rod bends and it gets pulled back against the fish and then it retracts, that's taking out some of the shock of the initial strike of the fish. This is a Penn International 30. It is on a chaos rod, seven foot chaos rod. We've got all roller guides. We need some big meaty gear. I've got Penn International 30s. You can go with Shimano TLD 30s or 50s. What the reel needs to be capable of doing is have enough drag resistance put against your line so that the planer, when it is set, is not pulling out drag against your reel constantly. More so than the gear, when you're planer trolling, you're gonna wanna use braid. Now on top of this braid, you're gonna need to have a shock cord. What's a shock cord? A shock cord is monofilament type leader, fluorocarbon or anything that basically, again, gives you shock from the initial strike of the fish when he hits. Shock lets your line stretch and retract, helps pull the hook back into the fish's mouth without yanking it out. Saltwater fish tend to see braid, so having braid right up to your hook is never a good idea. So personally, when I am fishing for kingfish, planer trolling, I use this. This is the exact leader I use. It's 80 pound monofilament leader from Andy. I use 100 feet of it. And now let's go over a little bit about the lure. What this thing is, is this is called a sea witch. This is a fabric sea witch. It's in the color blue and white. And trailing behind it, I got a little bit of mylar. Mylar is like bacon of the sea for fish. They love it. It's a high fish attractant. Basically, I've got two lures on top of each other, and then I've got 8 hooks, double 8 hooks. Say, okay, well, is that it? No, it's not. You're gonna wanna put a bonita strip on your hooks. The bonita strip is gonna leave some scent. It's gonna wiggle like a little tail of a fish as you're dragging this through the water. And the last thing that you'll need is wire leader. I've got this on some tiny wire leader. 40 pound test. Now, how do you hook your wire leader to your 80 pound monofilament leader? Instead of using a big clunky, chunky swivel, I like to use a little solid ring. 
So you will tie your lure directly on to your leader. There's no coming off. And here's another version of that same lure. It's a pink and white sea witch with the same mylar little called flash witch. That's what this little lure is and the same 8 hooks. So when I'm going for kingfish, these are the two go-to colors. Blue and white, pink and white. You're gonna wanna use a couple of different size planers. If you're not getting the bite, switch up your color. If you're not getting the bite, switch up your depth. My advice is if you're strictly fishing for king mackerel, learn to troll two planers at one time. Don't even worry about having baits up on top. All right, so that's the gear. Now what we need to do is understand a little bit about kingfish. They're over the reef. When do I get them? Do I get them at night? Do I get them in the morning? There's two productive times of day to get kingfish. One is in the morning between, you know, just daybreak and about 10, maybe 11 a.m. As the sun starts getting up high, they disperse over the reef and they go and they hide. And another productive time to get kingfish is at night. However, you're not really going to be trolling too much over the reef at night. So if you're doing planter trolling and you want to get into that bite, you're going to have to be an early bird and get out there and hit that reef. Next, when do we find them? What time of year are they biting? Kingfish are typically the most active during the springtime. Down here in South Florida, that's late March through June. That's when you're going to catch most of them. So let me clarify this. They're always around, but they're not in huge packs and numbers like they are in that springtime. Now there is another run of them that comes around later in the year in November, but they tend to be smaller and not as abundant. Kingfish are pack hunting fish. So if you get one, there's more than likely more than that around in that area. So you need to make sure once you get the hookup, you get the bite, look at your GPS, track back and sort of comb that area. They do move, but they should be more around. All right, so I said trolling. You gotta learn how to troll for these fish if you really wanna find them and get into the bite easy. So first thing is speed. You wanna do around seven miles an hour to eight miles an hour. You wanna pull that bait fast. The definition of trolling is the active pursuit of hunting fish. These fish are eating, they're eating machines. They're not a fish at rest. They're not looking to squander up to a bait and go, oh, I don't know if I wanna eat that or not. No, they see a target, they take the opportunity because another one might not come around and they attack it. Trolling is all about speed. If you're not going fast enough, getting that hookup is not gonna happen. Now, if you do get a hookup, the object is to not slow down too much. Keep that speed up, get that fish streamlined in the water, wind them up. Now let me explain to you a little bit about how to find kingfish over a reef while you're trolling. There is techniques to doing this right and wrong. I'm going to show you what charter boat captains do. And there's a reason they do this. It's the theory behind how bait fish act. Here we have our reef. This is what you're looking at on your GPS. You see reef structures here, relief, and then you start to see contour lines, tightly packed together contour lines. And then they start to get further apart. And then they start to come closer together again. Okay, so out off South Florida, this is what our reefs look like. Here we're at about 30 feet. Here we're at about 50 feet. Here we're at about 90 feet. Then we get out to 200 and then out to 300. These are our sections of our three reefs. First reef, second reef, third reef. How we're gonna troll this? We are not going to troll in a straight line down the reef. That's not how bait fish act. What bait fish do is bait fish go in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, evading predators. That is how they naturally act. Bait fish very rarely go up and down the coastline. If you've got your two baits out or whatever you've got out and you're trolling, you wanna make a pattern in and out of the reef, start at about, you know, 70, 80, 90 feet, and you're gonna to wanna to do these smooth S-shaped patterns in and out. You want to almost follow this. So when you are 
leaving the reef, you're going straight out. You don't want to make huge patterns so that you're almost going diagonal unless you're trying to cover more ground. The object is, is when you are over good reef and you see these lines, you want to go in and out, in and out, in and out, straight. More straight than angle. Now, sometimes the reefs of South Florida get very crowded at this time between 8 and 9 o'clock when all the charter boats start getting out, all the fishermen start getting out. You may have to adjust your pattern. Of course, you might get that one guy who's going against the grain coming this way. And you're on your way in. You may actually have to make a figure eight and work around traffic. Don't worry about that. It happens. As long as you are doing some sort of S-shaped pattern following what bait naturally does, you will eventually find the fish. Go in shallower. I wouldn't go in much shallower than 70 feet, especially if you're dragging planers, you can get them hooked on the bottom. And I wouldn't go out much deeper than the beginning of the edge of the third reef. Unless, of course, you're looking for Wahoo. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about King Mackerel. And they're in here, over this first reef, and the dip down to the second reef. These are the exact tactics and methods that I use to teach people how to get into the bite with King Mackerel. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a little bit of fun. We're gonna head out on the boat and we're gonna show you some live examples of what it's like getting into the bite with the Kingfish. Now we're gonna let our shorter, our smaller planer out first. So here's how you use a bridle system. If you hook the plate end of your planer set up and then the arm goes closer towards the main line. I get this question, is it going to fall off? No, it's not going to fall off. You'll be fine. So we got to let this one out almost double of what our long line will be. So the troll with two lines. I want to kick that line out that way. That way I can let my second line out straight without getting them tangled. So I'm going to turn into it. Get it kicked out at an angle. Now we're going to repeat the process for our short planer, which is the bigger of the two. We'll turn into our line that's already set out. And we're going to let this planer line head out about half the distance of that one. You want to set your longer planer first. So to do that, you just pull back on it, let it go, and it's set. Now we'll set the smaller two planers to the same thing. So if you look at the contour lines on the GPS, we're heading over a sort of deeper ledge of the reef. Hopefully we'll run into someone who's willing to uh, bite. Right, hold on, hold on. Keep going, we're gonna keep going. All right, big guy, we're hooked up, we're hooked up. Get your belt on, get your belt on. That's a good fish right there. All right. All right, there we go. Put it in there. All right. Our reel. So we got hooked up on the shorter, deeper planer. Took a nice solid run. This is a good fish out here. There you go, nice and slow, big guy. Pull back and reel on the way down. There you go. All right, so we got our shorter planer hit, which means we can leave our longer set, smaller planer out in the water. I'm gonna turn into Abby. I got the boat in slow idle forward. This is a big fish. We gotta keep some tension on him. So the fish is a good ways out there. Abby's still hooked up. But now we know that the fish are out deeper. So once we uh, get this guy to the boat with any luck and get him in, we'll take it from there and um, you know probably just go with the deeper of the two planers. Hook this guy right in about 150 feet of water. So before when I would fish with Abby with the planer, he would get to the planer and I would have to take it off and hand line it in. This is because of the trickiness of hand lining and wrangling a fish. Now this time, I'm gonna remove this planer and Abby's gonna to get to have the fun all the way up to the boat. What I need to do is walk back a little bit. Don't trip, don't trip. All right, keep winding up, buddy. There we go. 
is about a hundred feet away coming on in all right we're gonna see we're about ready to see what we got going on here Getting up the boat. nice and slow see a good fish good fish all right walk back a little bit all right So when I tip my lures with Bonita strips, I don't get real fancy. I just hook them straight onto the hooks. So I plan out where my trailer hook will fall, sink that through the meat, and then I take my lead hook, square it up, and send it right through what would be the front of your strip. And then we're hooked up and our lure is good, set, and ready to go. Now he's on the first fish of the day. You ready, buddy? We're ready. The deep planer. second nature. Alright folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed, hope you had fun, and I hope you learned a little bit something and were able to take something away from this, the beginner's guide to catching king mackerel. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing. Going wherever the cool wind takes us.